Hello everyone and welcome to Unstoppable Part 2. This time we're looking at the story of Ruth from the Bible. Ruth faced challenges and difficulties. There were some struggles. Things weren't like they would normally be. Does it sound familiar? But Ruth, because Ruth trusted in God and God has a plan, Ruth becomes unstoppable. And she's able to show us so many things about our lives and what we can learn when we might be willing to trust in God. This week we have our amazing leaders. We have Alex and Olivia. We have Laura and Asher. And we also have Lorna who's going to be joining us this week for the first time. And my name is Oliver. So welcome to Unstoppable Part 2 as we look at the story of Ruth. So are you ready? Are you ready? Fantastic! Then let's go and learn to be unstoppable with God. Hi everyone, I'm Laura and this week's story is all about Ruth and you can find the story in the Old Testament in the Bible. Hello, my name is Ruth. Can I tell you a bit about my story? Can I? Aw, oh, thanks guys. A number of years ago, I lived in a place called Moab, when one day a lady named Naomi, this is Naomi, with her husband and sons came to my town and I ended up marrying one of her sons. But things got really hard and before we knew it, it was only Naomi, myself and my sister-in-law called Orpah still alive. Then, when Naomi heard that the famine in Israel had ended, she decided to go back and well, because I had nothing else in Moab, I went too. Naomi tried to convince me to stay in Moab, but I decided that her people would be my people and her God would be my God. I was so serious that I promised to never leave her, ever, ever, ever. So off we travelled. It was a long way for sure. Eventually we arrived in Bethlehem and it caused quite a stir. Lots of people could hardly believe that Naomi had come back and that I was with her. Now... It was the time of the barley harvest, and I said to Naomi, Let me go out and collect up the leftover grain from the fields. Naomi said, Good idea, go ahead. Whilst I was in the fields, I met the owner called Boaz. He was really kind and said that I should stay in his field and I could help myself to a drink of water whenever I wanted to. This was so kind. It turns out that Boaz had heard all about Naomi and her life, and also my life too and he wanted to be kind and helpful. When I got home, you should have seen Naomi's face. I had so much grain, she nearly fell over. Where have you been gleaning? Naomi asked. In the field of Boaz, I said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up marrying Boaz. Naomi and I had a house to live in and food to eat. I didn't have to search for leftover corn anymore. It was amazing. You know what, boys and girls? The best part of all this was that it was part of God's plan for our lives. Who knew I would be married to the owner of the fields? Well, God did. I'm so pleased I promised to make Naomi's God my God. Now he has made me feel unstoppable. Hi everybody, it's time to make our craft. This week we're going to be making a rather cute bookmark which has um, a wheat stalk on it that we're going to use this piece of gold ribbon to thread through to make the ears of the wheat. So, you should have a hole punched bookmark, you should have a piece of golden ribbon in your um, pack you will need a pair of scissors and you'll need some sellotape. Now you'll need two pieces of sellotape and the first one we're going to use to fold the end of our ribbon into a nice small shape to go through our holes. So if possible if you can't do it, ask um, a grown-up or maybe an older brother and sister to give you a hand. 
and we're going to use some sellotape just to hold this in place so it ends up looking a bit like the end of a shoelace so it's nice and thin to go through the tiny holes of the bookmark if you've got any excess tape like I have you can just use your scissors just to cut it off again but it should look like this okay now what we're going to do is using our pointed end of the ribbon we're going to push it through the very bottom hole of our bookmark now when we push it through you have to be quite careful because obviously the ribbon gets wider further down and you don't want it to make the holes too wide and rip so pull it carefully through until you've got about this much at the end and then what we're going to do to stop it from coming through while we're threading is we're going to use another piece of tape just on the back to hold it in place just like this we can neaten it up later it's fine so then all you have to do is thread the nice small end through to the next hole on our wheat bookmark so you just push it through the hole it will go through eventually <laughs> oh mine's come a bit unstuck make sure when you wrap it round you wrap it round really tightly so you just pull it through and you end up with a nice little bobble that looks like a lovely little 3D ear of wheat and then you need to go in to the next hole up on your bookmark on the same side and pull it through again and then you just thread all the way up the little ears of corn I'm going to keep going with this one just for a second and then when we get to the end what we're going to do is finish off all the way back down here and when you get to the top if it gets a bit tricky you can ask a grown-up to help you which holes you need to go into next because some of them look a little bit tricky but when we get to the end you just need to put another piece of tape across the back just to help seal off our wheat stalk okay and that will keep it in place and then you have a beautiful bookmark to put inside your bible or any book you like uh, one two three four five six God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. He made the trees, He made the seas, He made the elephants too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. So mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, 
so strong and so mighty there's nothing my God cannot do well done everybody great actions I am sure of it at home brilliant job Oh, I'd love to see your actions in person here in the building, but until such a time, good job, I am convinced. And thank you too to Olivia and to Asher for leading us in our song today. Our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. I'm not quite that strong. But God is big and strong and mighty, and when God has a plan, he can make it happen. So... Before we have a quick time to reflect, Alex has a little quiz for us about our story. Alex, over to you. Hi guys, hope you all enjoyed that fabulous story about Ruth. Wasn't she just amazing? Now it is quiz question time. I've got five questions for you to answer to see if you can remember certain things about the story of Ruth. Let's go! Right, question one. What was the name of Ruth's friend in the story? Press pause on your screen and then come back and I will have the answer for you. The answer is Naomi. They were such good friends. I think they were actual BFFs. Question two. What was the name of the place that Ruth went to with Naomi? Hmm, have another thing. Press pause on the screen if you want and I'll come back with the answer. The place was Israel. Due to the famine, Naomi hadn't been able to be there for so long, but now the famine was over, she was desperate to get back. So off they went. Question three. What was the name of the harvest when they arrived in Israel? It was the barley harvest. Mmm, think of all the delicious things they could make from that. Question four. What was the name of the man who owned the barley fields? Don't forget you can press pause and then come back and I'll have the answer for you. His name was Boaz. And finally, question five. What was the man's name that Ruth ended up marrying? The answer is, it was Boaz again. He was such a lovely guy and Ruth was such a lovely lady. So they were destined to be together really. God knew all these things were going to happen. He had it all planned for Ruth. He knew that she was such a strong and courageous woman. So he set all this out for her. She really was unstoppable. I just love that God has a plan, whatever, whenever, wherever, God knows what to do. For me, it's a little bit like my map here, my map here of the world. Sometimes I look at this map of the world and I'm not entirely sure what I should do myself. Shall I travel around some of it? Should I not? Should I stay where I am longer? Oh, I don't really know. Just imagine though, just imagine if I was down here in Australia and I wanted to get all the way back up to here, to England, but I didn't have any money. How would I do that? How would I travel that far from there to there without any money? That would be, I don't know, I don't know, I just don't know. And that, that's a bit like Ruth's story. She seems to have become stuck. Life has had twists and turns and challenges and obstacles and everything seems to have stopped. And Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi, they're kind of stuck. But they place their trust in God and they make a move. They go back to Israel where, uh, where there's, the famine has ended and they can go back. And when they get there, this is where it gets really interesting. God starts doing things and he starts helping them. You see, Ruth goes to the field 
of the right person. And that person says, no, no, you need to stay at my field and you should do all of your collecting here. And then that person uh, makes sure that she's well taken care of. And then the same person ends up becoming her husband. They get married a bit later on in the story because God had a plan and arranged for all of the bits and pieces to fall into line so that Ruth ends up getting married and she's well taken care of. And so by the end of the story, Ruth and Naomi are living in peace. They don't feel worried anymore. They don't need to feel any stress anymore. And all of that because God had a plan and he worked it out for them along the way. Well, little did they know he worked it out with them. But God wants to help them. God wants to enable them to have, to become unstoppable, sorry, with him. So today, even though schools are just about to go back, and maybe you're slightly worried about that, or maybe you're really, really excited about that, and you want to go and see your friends for the first time, or maybe you're not quite sure if it's, what's it going to be like. Will it be different? Will it be the same? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. God has a plan. And in all of the things that happen, God can teach us and help us. You and I can become unstoppable with God when we trust in his plans for us. Plans to give us hope and plans to give us a future. God has good stuff for those who will trust him. Thanks for joining us, guys, as we have journeyed through the book of Ruth uh, for Unstoppable Part 2. Our next session coming up is on March the 28th, Sunday, March 28th, going live at 3 p.m. in the afternoon uh, again. But how cool, how cool is that, that despite all the challenges and all the things in life that don't quite seem to make sense and don't quite seem to add up in the right ways, God had a plan for Ruth. And just like he had a plan for Ruth, he has a plan for you and a plan for me and a plan for all of us. And if we work with him in his plan, he can make us unstoppable. It's fantastic. So let's just say a big thank you as we finish off to Alex and Olivia, to Laura and Asha and Lorna. Thank you guys. And thank you to you guys too for joining us. Hope you've had a great time, and we'll see you at the next Unstoppable in March. Goodbye. Bye.